Hi, I'm Dr. V. I'm Chief of the Spine Pain Program at Bloor Pain Specialists, and today I'm going to be talking about MRI. My MRI says I have a transitional vertebra. What does that mean? Well, transitional vertebrae are actually very interesting. For the most part, we all have the same number of bones, and they're more or less the same shape. And in the lumbar spine, almost all of us have five lumbar vertebrae, five bones. Now, on the side of each bone, on the side of each vertebra, we have a little finger-like bone that points in each direction. Those little finger-like bones are like little posts. And those little posts are bones that are part of the vertebra. They're part of the whole. And that's where the muscles attach so they can tilt us going this way or that way so we can rotate, we can bend and, and extend and stand up and so on. Now, those little tiny finger-like bones are small. In some cases, they're not that small. When they're not that small, it's typically the bottom lumbar vertebra. So here we have our transverse process off of our L5 vertebra. And that transverse process is normal and small on one side where the muscles attach to rotate this vertebra and help us bend and, and stay stable. Versus on the other side, the transverse process is quite a bit larger. Its growth has resulted in something called the pseudoarthrosis. This very thin line almost appears to be a joint. And a joint has been made there, even though normally we don't have a joint. And that's where, in its appearance, it appears to be a joint but isn't. And that's where the pseudo comes in. Pseudo means fake, and arthrosis is joint. So this is a fake joint. And those finger-like projections, when they're bigger, they can get in the way, meaning that they can lean on the vertebra below or on the sacrum, which is the big heavy bone right above the tailbone where all the vertebra there are fused. It can lean on that. And so that can cause us to shift our weight. So if somebody has a transitional vertebra on the left, they may want to lean to the other side or on the right, lean to the other side and so on to open up that space. If their pelvis is, is contributing to and they have discomfort, they may avoid standing or sitting a certain way just to not make that contact. But a transitional vertebra is not something that appears in later life. We're born with it. And so we don't necessarily have to be all that concerned when we become symptomatic from something like this, if we become symptomatic at all. A transitional vertebra is a bone that we've had our whole life. Now the question becomes, what changed in us? Well, you think about kids, kids are active. They're on monkey bars, hanging uh, from uh, going back and forth. They're running up and down playgrounds. They use their body. How often do you go with your whole office on a monkey, uh, on some monkey bars, chase each other on a playground, go up and down a, a field playing soccer? We don't use our body in our adult life as we did uh, as children. And so our, our muscles atrophy, we gain weight often, and there are different forces upon these bones. And so those are the factors that really are contributing to our symptom. Those are the factors we need to modify again. And granted, that's often easier said than done, but the bone itself is something that predisposes us to those symptoms rather than causing them on its own in isolation. It's the other stuff that pushed it over the edge to be symptomatic. What can be done to treat transitional vertebra or reduce symptoms? So a transitional vertebra, it depends really if it's fused or not fused. If it's partially fused or not quite there, then there's an element of mobility and strain. And so stabilization of the musculature really is the go-to. That's where people are going to have the most improvement. If it is fused, and in some cases where it's not fully fused, uh, the adjacent segment, the bones on top, the disc on top, will take much more force because it's not really receiving the cushioning that it's supposed to with an extra bone and an extra disc. And with that, there can be more pain and more symptoms from the higher levels. So what can people do to prevent that, knowing that they have this diagnosis? They can maintain their core stability, do yoga, Pilates, maintain exercises that uh, work not only on power, but more so on endurance so that their muscles are working for them even when they're not paying attention to their musculature. That is by and large the most effective thing for prevention of the worsening of the symptoms. 
In some cases, people have had portions of the tr transitional vertebra excised surgically, meaning they go for surgery, they cut away pieces of that bone. But remember, things do attach to these bones so we have some mobility. There's a purpose to them. And so the surgical outcomes are mixed. Sometimes there's scar tissue, sometimes there are other things that develop, and, and sometimes new pain. And so it, it's not a perfect option, but it certainly is an option as well for some. Here at Bloor Pain Specialist, we often use what's called radiofrequency ablation. And we've had videos on this in the past, so you can reference back to those. But radiofrequency ablation is the use of heat energy at the tip of a needle with a wire on the back end to heat up the nerve endings that flow over those transitional vertebrae. I use those, as my colleagues do as well, to heat up those nerve endings so people can't feel that connection with the neighboring bone. They can't feel the strain. In some cases, it's not just for the transitional vertebrae, but for the adjacent segments, because life's happened. People have used their bodies. People maybe have gotten tired over the years or gained that weight, haven't been as active as they wanted to, and the strain is already there. So sometimes they need the help and they need the treatment of levels above. And if that's what the patient needs, that's what we provide. Thanks for watching today's video. Please like and subscribe below. If you have any questions that you'd like us to address in a future video, please leave them in the comments area. If you want us to answer any questions about your care specifically, please contact the clinic directly.